so we see a bit of what we can do in the session view and why the session view is so unique. But we started off looking at the arrangement view to understand how a traditional DAW functions. So how do these two views work together? I'm glad you asked. Let's go back to the session view. Now again, in the session view, I'm not dealing with a set arrangement. I don't have a set timeline. Things can start at bar one, bar nine, bar 500. It doesn't really matter. Things start whenever I choose to start them. Right now we only have one clip here. Uh, so this whole concept might seem a bit abstract. I'm gonna bring in another clip and we're gonna create another audio track by simply just dragging some other content into this blank area. Once I do that, it'll create the appropriate track type. So let's go ahead and bring in maybe a percussion loop. That'll work. So again, I'm going to click, hold, and drag this over into this area. And we can see right now there's no track here, but I can see the clip that will be created. And once I let go, we have another audio track that shows up. We have another audio clip that's been placed in this clip slot. And if I double click on the clip, that's one of many ways that I can see the clip at the bottom of the screen. Now, let me go ahead and launch this first clip that I brought in. Now we have the first clip playing, the second clip is not playing yet. Whenever I wanna play the second clip, I just simply hit the launch button there, and it's gonna wait to the beginning of the next bar, so it's gonna start right on beat and play at the proper tempo so that it plays in sync with this clip. So when I'm ready, I'll hit my launch button. You see it's waiting, and it's very loud, let me turn that down. So now we can hear both of these clips are playing at the same time and they're both playing in sync with our metronome. And if I speed the tempo up, they both follow suit. Okay, great, but that doesn't explain how the session view works with the arrangement view. So what I did is I played this clip, I played it for a few bars, when I was ready, I launched this clip. Maybe I know that I wanna play this first clip for eight bars, and then after eight bars, I want to play this clip along with it. Then maybe after another eight bars, I want this clip to stop playing while the percussion clip keeps playing. Now, if I wanna do all that in the session view, there are a couple ways I could set that up, but ultimately it's gonna be a lot of me running around and clicking and clicking and basically trying to do this in real time. If I know what the arrangement is, if I know what I want, or at least have a basic idea, I can actually record my ideas from the session view to the arrangement view. So in the session view, I'm able to kind of play around more freely. I'm not tied to a specific arrangement, but if I know how I want to arrange the material, I can record that specific arrangement to the aptly named arrangement view. So again, just really quick, let's see how this could potentially work. At the top of the screen here, uh, these are known as my global transport controls. This allows me to know what bar that I'm in in the overall arrangement, which is here. These three numbers represent the bar, that's the first number. The second number is the beat or what quarter note you're on. The third number is what 16th note are you in in that beat, okay? So this last number never goes higher than four. You can break a quarter note down into four 16th notes and that's what this number represents here. Next to that we have our play button, a stop button, and we have our record button. But this record button is specifically for recording ideas to the arrangement view. So. If we play clips from the session view, while this record button is on, anything that we do will get recorded to the arrangement view. And it will not only record whatever clips that we're playing, but at what point that we start playing them and stop playing them. So this clip is set to launch. This is launch ready, basically. Uh, I just played this, I hit my space bar to stop the transport, but we can see that this clip, the launch button is green. So that means that if I hit the play button up here, this clip will start playing automatically. If I don't want this clip to start playing, I can simply hit the launch button on an empty clip slot. And you can see this doesn't look like a play button, it's a square, and this will essentially stop any clip that's gonna play on that track. Now you see that the launch button is no longer green. If I hit play up here, no clips play. So what I wanna do is start to record a basic arrangement of my clips that I have in the session view over here to the arrangement view. I will hit my record button up here. I get a count in. I start recording this first clip. 
Now everything seems normal. I don't really see anything different happening, but if I press tab in the arrangement view, I can see that clip is being recorded here. And so far I've recorded a little more than eight bars of that clip. Let me go back to the session view. When I'm ready, I can launch this next clip. We can turn off the metronome now. <laughs> and I'll launch that. One, two, three. So if I press tab, I can see my first loop has been recorded for 16 bars before this next loop came in. Let me go ahead and stop that first clip. We'll start this one up again, and then we'll stop this one. And then I will stop this last clip here. There we go. So I'll hit stop up here on my global transport controls. I'll press tab to go to the arrangement view. And now I can see that there's content in the arrangement view. And again, it's actually arranged. We don't see just loops that are gonna run indefinitely. We can see there's a definitive point where it starts, where it stops. This starts 16 bars into the arrangement and then stops right here. So that's just one way that we can use the session view and arrangement view together. Now, if you notice, the content in the arrangement view right now is all grayed out. Let's go ahead and hit the stop button on our global transport to bring us back to the first bar. And if I press play, I have content in the arrangement view, but I don't hear anything. And again, the reason why is because we can see this stuff is grayed out. Now, one thing that gets a lot of first time users tripped up with Ableton Live is how the session view and the arrangement view work. You can use both views together but each track can only play one clip at a time. And that clip will either be played from the session view or the arrangement view. So let's just make sure we're all on the same page here. We have three tracks, I have a MIDI track that's not being used, an audio track and another audio track. The tracks in the session view are the exact same as the tracks in the arrangement view. We have a MIDI track that's not being used and two audio tracks. The last place that I played my clips from was the session view. I launched my clips here and I did that so that I could record them into the arrangement view. But the last place we played the clips was from the session view. So what this means is that if we go to the arrangement view, these tracks right now are not in focus. The clips from the arrangement view are not the clips that are in focus because the last clips that we played were from the session view. And each track can only play one clip at a time and it can either be played from the session view or the arrangement view. So if I wanna hear what's playing in the arrangement view, I have to make sure that these tracks are in focus and that my clips are no longer grayed out. If we look next to the track names, we can see there's these little gray boxes here, the little arrow. And above that, we can see there's a little orange box right here. This orange box is called the back to arrangement button. What this means when you see this button is that there's tracks in the arrangement view that are not currently in focus. Uh, they may or may not have clips in them, but the point is, is that there's content in the arrangement view that's not going to be heard. If you want to hear what's going on in the arrangement view, we can hit this back to arrangement button and you'll notice those grayed out clips are now very vivid. And if we play the arrangement, we'll actually hear the content in the arrangement view. Now, while the arrangement view is playing, let's go back to the session view. And we can see the clips in the session view are not playing. Okay, if we look down here, we have an overview of what's playing in the arrangement view. So we know that there's something in the arrangement view that's playing and the arrangement view clip is the one that's in focus. Now, if I play this same clip here, you see that little overview of the arrangement view disappeared and now what we're seeing is a loop counter. This is showing us that this clip is looping. If I go back to the arrangement view, now this track is no longer in focus. Right here, that drum loop should have dropped out, but it's still playing because it's playing from the session view and not from the arrangement view. To further hammer this home, the drum loop should stop right here in the arrangement. But again, I'm not playing it from the arrangement view, I'm playing it from the session view. If I wanna hear the content of this track, what's playing in the arrangement view, I can hit my back to arrangement button up here. 
or I can hit this button, which will only enable this one track in the arrangement view. I press that, we can see this track is now in focus and there's no content playing right here, so our loop stopped because this is the end of the arrangement essentially. So the more we play around with Ableton Live, the more that's gonna make sense. The session view and the arrangement view use the same tracks, they use the same mixer, and each track can only play one clip at a time. It doesn't matter if that clip's playing from the session view or the arrangement view, only one clip can be played per track at a time. Keep that in mind because that's a limitation that we can actually use to our advantage in some very creative ways.